How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern, Sundays with Andrew Zarian. And yes, it is Friday on the show, and I'm here today. And that means it's Fun Friday. What the heck does that mean? Well, it's a good question. We're going to try and have fun today. So I'm going to take your text message questions. We're going to perhaps take some phone calls. I would say almost certainly take some phone calls. Because while it is Friday on this show, there's really not exactly a lot to talk about. Although when this show is over, I'm going to, I'm going to make myself some lunch. And then I'm on my way to Friday Night SmackDown. The debut of SmackDown on the USA Network is taking place here in Seattle. Three matches announced for the show including a undisputed WWE Championship cage match. Boy, that takes me back to the old days in the Seattle Center Coliseum. And uh, and a couple of other matches as well. So we'll go over that, the lineups for the Rampage show tonight, Collision show tomorrow, and then, of course, all of the news. War Games coming up for Survivor Series. An unsurprising person being advertised. I think we all know what the main event's likely going to be. We've got... The update on the Motor City Machine Guns, where they appear to be heading, which we've kind of known for a while. Dynamite Ratings, update on Zack Sabre Jr. and the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. He has not won it, but it is kind of expected he will, and we know his first challenger. And then as noted, text messages. So uh, today is the day I will read some. we got plenty of time. 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. F4W online at gmail.com if you'd rather email. F4W online threads, Instagram, and Cameo. And I am at Brian Alvarez on Twitter, slash X. And uh, next couple of days, we're going to have some real fun stuff for my X slash Twitter subscribers. We'll be taking a trip to SmackDown tonight and somewhere special tomorrow. Subscribe to find out. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back on the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Except for VV also of WrestlingObserver.com. And yes, it's Fun Friday here on the show. We're going to try and have fun. Everybody cheer me up. It's, What's wrong today? It's just a dull ache. Look at you. You're in black. You're God. mourning over yourself. I am in mourning. I've been mourning over my state. But I'm excited to go to SmackDown tonight. That should be fun. Are, are they getting you a motorized scooter? Have you called ahead? They ain't getting me anything. I bought a ticket. Yeah. Is it is it in the handicap section? No. Gonna be able to survive with that. Brother, leg I've been walking time? everywhere, dude. All right. Probably stupid, but I've been walking everywhere. Well, you gotta be careful. Might give out on you there. It's you not. It's not. It doesn't feel be, like that. It's not. It's not loose. You know, how embarrassing though that would be if your knee gave out while you were there. Brian Alvarez, if Randy Orton walks by, just looks like. Can you imagine what he would say? See that right there? Two hundred fifty-five straight days including the day after I destroyed it. I hobbled 10,000 steps so I wouldn't break my streak. I've been walking every day. Are, are you doing that um, for what reason? For your health or to, like, spite Lance and say that no matter what I, happens, I just, I'm going just, to walk more I've been 255 you. days, dude. I can't stop now. I can't. I'll probably have to stop if I have to get surgery. But well, yeah. until then, maybe not. Hey, like, nowadays, you walk right out of that place. So... We'll see. Hey, you should be happy that you've made it, what, damn near 50 years of life and never had that thing scoped. Never. Never had anything done. to me. Never had anything done except my eyeballs. Which still work fine, by the way. 2006. Indeed. You know how primitive LASIK was in 2006? It's still holding up to this day. Anyway, SmackDown tonight has Cody and Solo Sokoa in a steel cage match for the undisputed title, which is... The opener. Interesting. I think obviously the idea of it opening is get people tuned into USA immediately. Could also be a. Could also be a. Angle alert. I think maybe both. Yeah, you got to set up something, for. Because okay. uh, it ain't gonna be solo and and Cody at the pay per view. This is gonna be this is gonna be the end of that. Then we have Kevin Owens and a mystery partner. Against Grayson Waller and Austin Theory. Why do I just think that's Randy Orton? 
Then we've got Andrade and Carmelo Hayes in their best of infinite series. Since there's no actual number they're trying to uh to best. So that's coming up tonight. And can't say it's like, you know, it's kind of like when we talk about Dynamite, like where's all the matches? But there is one difference between WWE and and AEW and that is yeah, they, that they got Roman Reigns. I don't think the Roman's on the show tonight. The difference the difference is that for the most part and I think that everybody is going to agree with this. I don't want any I don't want any fights over this. For the most part, if you watch SmackDown and Raw, you know who's going to be on pretty much every show. Because if you're in a program on Raw and SmackDown, you're there every single week. Whereas on the AEW shows, particularly like Rampage and Collision, I mean, if they don't tell you what's on the show, you have no earthly idea who's on the show. I mean, we had a pay-per-view on Saturday, and no MJF wasn't on the show. Nowhere to be seen. Swerve wasn't there. They haven't told us anything about Swerve. Although I can tell you he ain't going to be around for a while. So, you know, the usual SmackDown crew. Like, you're going to see Bianca, and you're going to see uh, Jade, and you know who's going to be on the show. Now, with that said... We've got the lineups for uh, the Friday Rampage and the Collision Show. And I was actually surprised because I went on our board, which is usually pretty uh, largely pro AEW. And there's a giant thread like, what is going on with these shows? This is the lineup for Collision. FTR versus the Grizzled Young Vets, which should be very good. Conglomeration and Hologram versus Mortos and the Premier Athletes. Wheeler, Yuta versus Anthony Henry. Private Party and Commander in action. Which I'm not sure why we can't say who the opponents are since the show's already been taped. Bang Bang Gang versus Gates of Agony. Yuka Sakazaki versus Serena Deeb. And Queen Aminata versus Robin Renegade. So no Brett, no Mox, no... Brett? Who's Brett? Brit. Oh, Brit. No, she's vanished nope. off the face of the earth, dude. Well, vanished. No, no Thunder Rosa, no Mercedes Monet, no MJF, no Swerve, no Moxley, no... Cl Osprey, Darby. I mean, it could go on and on. Yeah. We do have uh, Rampage tonight with Takeshita versus Action... It was funny because uh, it's like, don't read spoilers. I'm just going to read the lineup. Takeshita versus Action Andretti. Soraya and Harley versus Marty Bell and Allison Kay. Camille versus Robin Renegade. Conglomeration versus Dark Order. And Roderick Strong versus Beef. 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 One name, Beef. No spoilers. Remember people got so angry about the way that I would read the matches, like that was revealing who won? <laughs> Listen, guys. This is what we're going to do, okay? Heel this is what we are going to do. As God is my witness, on my broken freaking leg, I swear on my children's lives, I have no idea who wins all these matches. But I am going to predict right now who wins all of these matches. Is that okay with everybody? I, I honestly know. don't know, but I'm going to make predictions here, okay? I predict... Takeshita beats Action Andretti. I'll ride with you. I predict Saray and Harley beat Marty Bell and Allison Kay. I agree. I predict Camille beats Robin Renegade. I'd figure. And if Robin Renegade's wins, if I were Brit, I'd quit. I predict Roderick Strong defeats Beef. <laughs> Probably the safest bet of the night. And I predict the conglomeration beats Evil Uno, Alex Reynolds, and John Silver tonight. That's I'd my like prediction. I'd so. I'd hope so. Yeah. And hey, as far as SmackDown, I'll do the same thing. I predict Cody beats Solo, obviously. I I actually don't know about Grayson Waller and Theory versus Kevin and the mystery partner, because I don't know who the mystery partner is. But I'm going to go out on a limb. I predict Kevin and the mystery partner win, and Grayson and Austin Theory finally break up. They wait till the show I'm at to finally pull the trigger on this breakup. And I have no idea who's winning Andrade and Carmelo Hayes. Because, I don't know, they're just they're in a series. I should do the same thing for, uh, should I do predictions for Collision? 
Well, I'd rather you do those as opposed to running down every match on Victory Road. Although you could do that too. Actually, I mean, to take collisions. Chance, go ahead. Collisions a little harder. I don't know who's going to win FTR and Grizzled Young Vets, but the Grizzled Young Vets should win. They're new. I mean, it's true. That would be the the smart thing to do. Briscoe and Kyle O'Reilly versus Mortos, Nice, and Daivari. And hologram with uh, the babyface. I predict the babyfaces win. Yeah. Wheeler Yuta beats Anthony Henry. Yeah. I mean, I presume Private Party and Commander win since they don't even have their opponents named on the lineup for a show that's maybe taped. marina shafir can come out and choke them all out again what an embarrassment that was for uh commander well uh we've got uh bang bang gang and cage of agony i presume the guns and juice win uh, you that's can what i would think although that would be the one i would probably i guess stay away from if i had to put real money on it you could sakazaki Serena deep i don't know i, I presume you could because she's back and I don't think Robin Renegade has much of a chance against Queen Aminata. No. Robin Renegade's doing jobs on Friday and Saturday, it looks like. <laughs> they used her both nights. That's, well, it's good for her. Chris says the grizzled young vets aren't signed with AEW. Is that true? Oh, that's true. I changed my prediction in FTR. Actually, I don't... I, I, no, 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 no. I mean... Well, even if they're not signed, they're obviously being used. So I don't... You know, this would be... Part one of a plan, I would assume. So, yeah, I mean, I would still have the Grizzly Young Veterans win. They don't have to be full-time AEW guys to get a win. I mean, we've seen that before. This person says the Serena push is officially over. There was a push? It never got started, Yeah, I missed, I missed that. It's too bad, too. I mean, she had that one championship match, but that was a long time ago. No, I mean, her and Deanna, they never, they never got them in gear, either one of them. All right, stand by. More after the break. Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper Vivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Well, we got a pretty decent question here. Why is predictability for weekly shows a thing? SmackDown leading off with a title match and figures to be a waste of time. Well, I mean, why don't we wait till we see the rating? Because I don't think that's going to be a waste of time. There's going to be a ton of people that watch that match. Hold hold on. Even if nobody watches it, artistically, it may come out great where they push a whole bunch of stuff along. So I don't know why we're burning it so early. Yeah. (laughs) The the issue is not... Here's the the thing, everybody, that I think... I'll I'll explain this. Predictability can be good sometimes. No, predictability is almost always good. Because it means it makes sense. I can look at a WWE pay-per-view and predict most of the winners. I can look at an AEW pay-per-view. I can predict most of the winners. And I can predict it because that's what makes sense. That's who should have won in all of those different situations. Every now and then, there is a match. I mean, a good example is the Grizzled Young Vets and FTR. I don't know who's going to win. I have no idea. So, uh, you know, that's not predictable, but that's not bad. And the reason it's not predictable is... What are they doing with FTR and the Grizzled Young Vets? You know what I'm saying? If FTR were were building up for a championship match in the next pay-per-view, then it becomes more predictable. Well, FTR is going to win. Or you could do a swerve, make it unpredictable, the Grizzled Young Vets win. FTR wins the titles, and you've got contenders, okay? But the reason I bring up I'm going to predict who's going to win all of these matches is because... Is there much of a chance Solo beats Cody? No, there's there's practically no chance, okay? There's practically no chance. But it's two stars facing off against each other. Kevin Owens and his mystery partner versus Grayson Waller, Austin Theory. Grayson and Austin could win. We don't know who the mystery partner is. And they're all big names. Grayson and Theory, former tag team champions, weren't they? I don't remember. Yeah, they, they were, not, but not that, that big a name. Matter. The whole thing is... Kevin Owens is the thing that people love him so much and there's interest in who can be his partner that he's he would be the reason that you watch that because they, everybody loves Kevin Owens. And Andrade and Carmelo, they're, they're two stars. They're fighting. Now that's they, something they've been working. They both want the shot at uh, LA Knight. And so they're fighting and random series of matches to determine who gets it. It's WWE's okay? banger. That's what they're doing there. But, I mean, Marty Bell and Allison Kay. Beef, Robin Renegade. Tell me the last time you saw the Dark Order win a match on TV. Yeah, never, never happens. Yeah. Can't remember the last time I saw the Premier Athletes win a match. Allison and Marty, Anthony have been Henry, forever, but they're they're not established there. Robin Renegade twice. 
I mean, there's there's predictability, and then there's like we're watching squash matches here. We're watching a bunch of squash matches. Superstars. And one of my issues with AEW and the way they do squash matches is not just AEW because they did the same thing on NXT this week. It's like I don't want to see. This is an example. I mean, I mean, actually, I don't think Robin Renegade will get anything on Camille. Probably nothing. No, she should. She not. may go back and forth with Queen Aminata. I mean, she Beef may get some spots on Roderick Strong. It's like I don't want to see a fifty-fifty match with a star against somebody who never wins. Like that doesn't do it for me. No. And I'm still upset about Chelsea Green and Julia on NXT. Same. I mean, listen, I don't have a problem with Chelsea Green. Okay whatever her real name is. Should I find it so I can make sure that everyone knows I don't dislike her personally? What's her name? Miss Cardona. Uh, Chelsea Cardona. There you go. And she was actually born Chelsea Green. <laughs> anyway, I don't have any problem with Chelsea Green, but, but she is a comedy figure on the main roster. She's a comedy figure that has Piper Niven to back her up, help her win her matches, do all of the work the whole nine, okay? She's a comedy figure. And not only that, she works like a comedy figure. She gets hit and she does the windmill arms, okay? You put her in the ring with Julia, that's fine if Julia in her debut is going to just massacre her. But they went back and forth. And so we have a comedy character with comedy mannerisms, comedy selling, comedy offense... And Julia's selling for her. Throwing her over a desk. And then people are like, well, who could... Bro, you want me to go over the, the women's roster of WWE and tell you who else could have been in there with Julia? Wait, Brian, as you do that, let me just say this. Chelsea Green was the right person in a lot of ways because of her experience level. But she also takes a hell of an ass kicking. And if you wanted her to have some offense on Julia, then have Piper Niven there so Julia can fight off two women in eight minutes. Otherwise, this should have been about four minutes. Chelsea should have had one chance to get something in, and Julia could have stuffed it. It, it should be as simple as that. So listen, obviously, you know, sh Julia shouldn't go in there and beat, like, Bianca Belair or Rhea Ripley, okay? But if you're going to do a 50-50 match with Julia, who do we have here? Could have been Alba Fire, Dakota Kai, Isla Dawn, Ivy Nile. You oh, could wait, do you no, could no, do no, EO no, or no, Kyrie. No. I wouldn't do those no, two. No, wait, wait a second. Katana and Caden. 50 match with Ivy Nile. Look, the only person she's not she's was... not pushed as a comedy character. Yeah, but I, I, she's out no. there with the Creeds. The Creeds can grab Jewel. There's a million but things Brian, that you can do. Look at how they they were pushing. I wouldn't do 50 50 with her. Maxine. I wouldn't do 50-50 with almost anybody unless it was EO. Because then, if you have EO, if you have Bailey, if you have that level of woman, okay, do 50-50 because this superstar from Japan that you're treating like a superstar that comes off like a superstar should be able to go 50-50 right from Jump Street with somebody else and be a superstar. Other than that, she should be beating everybody else relatively quickly. Again, Roxanne Perez, she could do 50-50 with, but you're building to that. So almost any, again, I think they made the right decision with Chelsea. It was just how they went about doing that match, I think, was a mistake. It's not going to kill Julia or anything like that, but it seemed odd that you do all this buildup and then she's going 50-50 for damn near 10 minutes with a comedy character. All right, a couple of news notes here. Roman Reigns advertised for Survivor Series. I think we figured that. I think we know what the Survivor Series War Games match is likely going to be. The Bloodline versus the Old Bloodline, or whatever Roman's crew is going to be called and whoever he's got. So... The table setters. Let's see. Solo, Tama, Tonga, and Fatu versus Roman, Jimmy, Jay... And Tala Tonga? I don't know. Guess we'll have to find uh, out. No. What do you mean, no? Because he's... He, no, Hikaleo comes in on Roman's side? Roman needs a team. What, do you put Sami Zayn in there? You could. Part of the old bloodline? The old school yes. bloodline? Actually, yeah. If you wanted to, but you I mean... You could, but... Roman, Jay... Jimmy, Sammy... 
I mean, you could do. Well, I mean, I guess it also depends on. First, there's Zilla Cody. Fat too. Zilla didn't finish very high in that PWI 500. I checked. Well, is Cody going to have a singles match on Survivor Series? If not, he could be. I presume he will. He could be man number, but if he's not, he could be man number. You actually five could do. You like could that. do Cody and, and Roman. It doesn't have to be yeah. five. It can be four. It can be a four person war games. Well, All if right. you're gonna do four, then I don't. Yeah, well, yeah. Again, you could even put Cody in there. You could put Sammy in in there. You can put. There's somebody else you could put in there, but I think. Again, you're going to have to continue to push this thing on, and if you have Tala Tonga on the way, as soon as things get even again, well, that's when you go ahead and bring him in so he can be there with Solo and his other brothers and with Fatu and get the numbers advantage again. I, I, that's how I would do it, at least. And then we have got uh, Alex Shelley and Chris Sabin likely heading to WWE, which uh, yeah. I'd figured because... You know, they, they had a couple of farewell matches, but couldn't really talk about it. That's usually WWE. And you know what the other sign was? They're not wrestling FTR on collision. And that's um, If that would have happened by now, they would have already shown up by now, I think, if they were going to be there. And, hey, look, it's actually really good for them because I look at their ages and I think about the experience they have and the fact that WWE – has no problem going smaller, or going more international. They fit in perfectly as far as being trainers that can help out down the line as well, too. Oh, man, Luchagato. Can we please not call him that? I think he's talking about Talatanga. First off, that's the guy's name. Yeah. And second, they trademarked it. So I'm not saying Talatanga is like a comedy thing. Like, he's really tall. He'll be Talatanga. Like, that's going to be his name. So if you want to get mad at somebody, don't get mad at me. Do you like that more than Hikaleo? I mean, they're fine. I don't care if it's stupid. It's not my idea. <laughs> Why is he yelling at me, saying, I, telling I me know. to stop saying this name? Maybe retroactively somebody can yell at you that they created a beaver cleavage character. So we got uh, Dynamite did uh, 716,000 and a point two one, which is a very good number. There was, there was talk that maybe, you know, the day after the debate, they might, uh, you know, have some issues, but they did not. And uh, NXT, like, did we talk about NXT here on the show, the rating? Nothing, nothing will stop an NXT viewer, no. Brother, this NXT rating <laughs> was freaking amazing, okay? Let's see if I can find it here. It was six, what was it, six something. I got the quarters. 620. <laughs> okay, NXT did uh, 628 and a .19 head-to-head -head with the presidential debate, debate that did... 67 million viewers. It's like a Super Bowl. 67 million viewers. They went head to head. <laughs> they had to watch that. And they were up 12% in 18 to 49 versus last week. You know, I think the NXT folks got it right after watching that debate. Good Lord. <laughs> hey, you know, I got to say something about uh, about ratings when we come back from the break. Everyone's favorite topic. But you might want to hear this, everybody. So that's going to be after the break, and then we'll take oh, your uh, we gonna learn something? text messages, 425-780-7566. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Like Semper Vivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. So uh, this is the thing I wanted to say about the ratings. Learn them, Brian. It's not, it's not learning. It's just something I've been thinking about lately. So, you know, what's important to the company when they want to sign a new TV deal is the 18 to 49, okay? So there's a lot of emphasis put on what's the 18 to 49. Dave is, is strictly 18 to 49. 18 to 49. So remember we had that argument a while ago, and I was like, dude, the, the dynamite overrun always drops. And he goes, it never drops. Remember that big argument? I do. I think I figured out what he was talking about. Got He's it. looking at the 18 to 49. Yes. Like, there are times when the viewership, like, drops a lot, but the 18 to 49 slightly rises. Yes. Okay. Well, here's here's my thought on all of this. Yes. For business, okay, for signing a new television deal, the most important number is 18 to 49 and where you rank on the charts, okay? that That obviously is something that needs to be paid attention to. But we are now at a point... Where WWE's got, like, I don't know how long this deal is. It's long. 
Like they got they just signed new deals. They got a new five years. They got a new television package. AEW is about to sign a deal. It probably I don't even know. I have no idea. It could be a five year deal for all I know. It's gonna be it's gonna be an extended one. And so once the deals are signed and we're looking at year one, I mean eighteen to forty nine, I mean it's that's cool and all. It's nice to know where it ranks and everything like that, but I mean, we got our deal signed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But what I do think is that when we only concentrate on 18 to 49 and we just ignore the viewership, the number of people watching, okay? I understand that 18 to 49 is your most valuable demo. But what's also important is how many people are watching, okay? Hallelujah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. You know, WWE is is number one. AEW is often number two, number three. NXT, you know, they're doing they're doing very well, but you know, a lot less people are actually watching AEW. And I, I as a as a viewer, as a fan of AEW, I do find that somewhat disconcerting. It's nice that they still have a good chunk of eighteen to forty nine watching, but like. That's a lot of people that have disappeared. But Brian, and the it's whole- not all cord cutting. It's not all cord cutting. It's, you know, if you're if you cut the cord like I did, I don't have cable. I cut the cord. I watch everything on YouTube TV and my viewership gets counted. But I bring it up because I was thinking about it because we were talking about the election. And uh, you know, on Wednesday or Thursday, or it was Wednesday, boom, headlines plastered everywhere. What was plastered everywhere? 67 million viewers. I think they're eating the dogs. They didn't. Well, they, 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 that was plaster too, but <laughs> the point is they didn't plaster the 18 to 49. They didn't plaster, you know, they plastered 67 million Americans watched this debate. That's a very important number, okay? 67 million people care enough about what's going on in this country that they watched that debate. It's very much like the Super Bowl. You know, uh-huh. you see how many million people watched the Super Bowl. So I'm not saying that viewership is more important in 18 to 49, especially during a contract year. But the idea of, well, we don't need to talk about the viewership at all. The actual number of humans watching, like where do they rank on the TV charts? I think that we need to talk about both of them because like the it final. is a it is a big deal when you used to have a one point. You know, when when Dynamite debuted, it was like... And the same thing with SmackDown. They debuted on Fox. They debuted on Fox. Four million people watching. And then they, on average, got about, you know, 2.3 million. So, you know, that always happens on a debut. Like, the debut on USA, the debut on CW. Like, it's going to be a giant number. They're never going to reach that again. But, you know, if you see a show that... Well, you know, last year they were doing, uh, you know... 900,000 on average. Now they're at 650. I mean, yeah, they're still ranked really high on the charts and got a good 18 to 49, but like, where do those people go? Why are those people not watching anymore? That's my question. Well, there's a lot there, but I mean, you know, the, the last episode of MASH or Seinfeld or whatever it is, it's about the number of people that tuned in more than 18 to 49 because it shows you how massive of a hit that was. Yes. You know, you need to acknowledge the important demo, the money making demo, the demo that's paying your ad rates. You do need to acknowledge that. But you also need to acknowledge how many people total cared. Yeah. You know, what's the most important demographic to a news channel? It's people over the age of 50 years old. It's that demo. But when you hear about them talking about numbers for these stations, what's important is the overall and another part of this is if your show is doing say 242,000 pretty much throughout the show and then you have that's going kind of downwards throughout the show and then in that fourth quarter you get an uptick of 5,000 viewers say in 18 to 49 but you've also fallen overall 20,000 viewers and you see that big dip when it comes to the overrun, okay, you were up technically. What does that mean? What the most important number has been for AEW in my mind, or one of them has been every single week, year over year, you've lost 
one out of every five overall viewers and one out of every four 18 to 49s. That's the most important number. Trying to fight and Well, hold on. on. Hold on. I will say Go this. Ahead. Go up ahead. until today, up until, well, whenever they announce it, the most important number actually was their 18 to 49 and where they're ranked. That's what's going to get them this deal. Uh, but sure. now, like before, remember people used to always go, what about a million? They were all that magic million. Brother, that million didn't mean jack. But now, now that you've got your new deal, it'd be pretty nice to build that up to a million people watching your show every week. Yeah. That's all yeah. I'm saying. And the one thing about the debut broadcast, and we do, we do differ on this, is yes, it does always drop. But it also shows you what's possible. Because people act like the dumbest people in the world just stumbled in and they have no... What is this What is this thing I'm seeing here? Look, most of them are wrestling fans. Most of them have an idea what's going to be taking place. And you get max it out with... You only get one shot to get that very first impression on there. So, to me, it also gives you something to shoot for. And that's what AEW was doing for a while. In some ways, they started off way too well with their rating. I thought it was going to be more around like 800,750. And they started very high. And unfortunately, what's happened is now we're down to a point where we're saying 700,000 for them is really good because right now that is really good. And now they're trying to figure out a way how to keep their head above water that way. And I'm not convinced that they're doing that. This summer was big and important for them to try to turn their everything around and try to get things going by the time fall is hit. And to me, they haven't done it. And I know the pay-per-view numbers are great, but it doesn't. There's still nothing about this product, and we'll see what happens with Moxley and this whole storyline. But they have done nothing to make me feel like this ship is actually turned in a good direction or in the right direction. Per says ratings are not indicative of the quality of the show. Reason most of the four major sports and put a heavy... Well, here's the thing, buddy. <laughs> ratings are not indicative of the quality of the show in your mind. But ratings are indicative of the quality of the show in the mind of each individual viewer. All right? If you advertise... Like, this CW debut is going to do a giant rating because fans see it as an important show because CM Punk, all these other guys are going to be on the show. You can, you can look at quarter hours and you can see what made people tune in and what made people tune out. What makes a person tune in is what they see as quality and what makes them tune out is also what they see as quality. So if you look at the entire show and you're like, man, I really like that show, but it did a bad number. Well, that doesn't mean it was a bad show. Of course, it doesn't mean it's a bad show. What it means is, for whatever reason... X number of people did not see it as worthy of their viewership that night, or they turned it off at some point or whatever. So, yeah, the ratings, the quarter hours, the minute by minute, it is indicative of what people see as, but you personally, you personally, you may like every show. Some people like every AEW show. Some people like every AEW angle. They just love it. That's great for you. But you're not everybody which is a very important point that a lot of people don't understand. You're not everybody. You're only you. Do you understand? And same with me. And same with Dave. That's when people get mad about a star rating. It's like, why are you mad about it? Do you agree with it? No? Okay. Can we move on to something else? Or you have to get mad at him because he didn't see it exactly like you did. That's only one guy's opinion. Why are you mad about it? Like, what's going on here? I was, you know what? I was going to continue things on, but I'm going to go ahead and stop it right there. I can't top that. Just go ahead and leave it right there. On his Twitter, Paul Fontaine was asking if we think SmackDown tonight does over or under 1.5 million and a .40 in the key demo. Hmm. What do they got tonight? Is there an NFL game? No. No? Co college football. All right. It beats 1.5 million and oh, a .40. Oh, wait, wait. We got, we got On Patrol Live celebrating their anniversary. This is going to be right? over. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing the over. <laughs> Over 1.5 and over 0. .40. I think so as well, too. I mean, we've seen these numbers. We've seen them with Raw around, what, that's what they did this past week was around 1.4. I can see them starting off very high. And, again, I think people believe that Roman Reigns is going to be there. And, it's again, like it's the first show. So, yes, they're going to probably do very, very well this week. Any update on Wardlow? Last I heard he was injured. Well, I know that Wardlow... 
he like hurt his knee and then said he didn't hurt his knee, but then came out in a knee thing. And then we haven't seen him since. So I, I actually don't know. He's hanging out with Miro. And they never tell you who is and is not injured. So I don't know. Okay, here's a good question. What on All earth right. is AEW going to do with the fourth weekly show? Okay, here's the thing, everybody. Okay? Here's the thing. A couple of people yesterday were like, God, I hope this isn't some show on FS1 at 2 a.m. syndicated. And like, what I thought was, that would be great. Okay? Because I have to review it. No, here's the deal. <laughs> here's the deal. Tony already has too much on his plate. Okay? He's got mm -hmm. Dynamite, Rampage, Collision. He's already got too much. Yeah. If this FS1 show is like a fourth show in an important time slot, and he's got to now spread himself amongst four shows, they'll like it. Yeah. But, but, if they're willing to pay this bloke $45 million for a show at 2 a.m. on FS1 featuring dark level matches, brother, that's the best scenario. Take that $45 million, <laughs> throw some people on dark at 2 a.m., and concentrate on your three important shows. That's what I do. Well, if they I were like, I'll, hey, hey, listen, br brother, we'll give, you, we'll give you 45 million, but the show's going to air at 2 a.m. on FS1, or we'll give you 60 million, and it's going to be um, Monday nights at 9. I'd be like, give me the 45 million at uh, 2 a.m. I'll take yeah. it. That's free. <laughs> you're, giving, you're being given free money. And just put anything on there. It doesn't matter. You sign the deal. That's what I think it is. I, I hope it ends. I hope the, it is. Uh, so somebody told me maybe it's not even FS1. Maybe we're going to have 2B Shockwave. Nah, it'll be. I think it'll be FS1. All right, back in a moment, Observer Live. Show Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. It's actually you know a great question. Hold on. This Wait, is a great question. He says, I'm watching Wrestling Observer Live on YouTube. My question is, when WWE moves to Netflix, will there be times that Raw will have an earlier start time in the States when Raw goes overseas, similar to how the PLE start earlier when they are overseas? I'm thinking they wouldn't need to put Raw in a tape delay anymore when they are overseas since it's on Netflix. That is a great question. That is. And I think that that's what they could do. I don't see any reason why they would have to tape delay it for Netflix. It's not like there's a regular schedule. Well, but that's the thing is maybe they're trying to do that and they want to make it destination programming at X time. So you could do it and not advertise it and just have it up there for the people that know. But I would figure that they're going to want to have I would figure they would want to have it uniform. But, yeah, certainly there's no reason that you couldn't do that and make it a special for everybody that's willing to be up at three in the morning and watching a show from Tokyo or something like that, as opposed to the way they've done it in the past. And last thing here, everybody at Brian Alvarez on Twitter slash X at Brian Alvarez. If you subscribe, become one of my Twitter followers. I will be tweeting throughout my journey to SmackDown here tonight. Only for my subscribers. And tomorrow, what are you laughing about? Nothing. Tomorrow, only for my Twitter slash X subscribers, I will be traveling to the Chehalis Flying Saucer Party 2024. And I will be tweeting all of the excitement. And there will be a lot of excitement. I got the VIP package. There's all sorts of exhibits and speakers and... If you're an After Dark fan, yep, sign up today. Shahalis Flying Saucer Party 2024. I'll be there. The Shahalis Flying you Saucer Party. all about it. Yeah, there was, once a, there was once a flying man in Shahalis. Did you know that? No. Well, Google flying it. man? Google it. Shahalis Flying Man. So anyway, we're out of here. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.